great. We want to welcome you. It is Sunday. Welcome to the living room. Where are we at, guys? The living, living room. room. We are at here at the living room. We are so happy for you to allow us to welcome us to into your living room. So we want to welcome you into our living room. So right where you're at, we just want you to go ahead and take a moment and share this experience. So if you have Facebook, any of our social media platforms, go ahead and share this experience. On Facebook, start a um, watch party and let everyone, because we want to be able to reach those everybody we want to be able to reach everyone that we can we want the message of god to basically just go to every home every heart and touch every person's life so if you're on facebook go ahead and share this experience on instagram you can follow us on instagram i am thrive living and go ahead and share this experience as well let people know who we are what we're about and also on YouTube. On YouTube, you can follow us on YouTube as well, and you can share the experience on YouTube. Throughout the week, we have so many things going on that cater specifically to you and to make sure that you are always Thrive Living. So on Mondays, or we have our Thrive Kids channel. So Thrive Kids are putting out videos that are made for kids, by kids, and the things that they are coming up with are extremely funny. They're hilarious. And they are just catered to your children. And they bring the word of God. They bring more um, things so that it could be known to, ch to kids um, by kids. And we also, on Wednesday, we have the after. So make sure to log on to the after where our pastor, JJ, and Danny T get together. And they just go deeper into what we talk about here on Sunday. And we also have on Friday, we have Thrive Live in the Zoom Room. So every Friday, make sure to join us on Thrive Live in the Zoom Room. But in order to join us, you have to link on with us. So you, we want you to go to thriveliving.org, the link right down here, and go ahead and register because it's more of an intimate setting, and we want to make sure that you get the code to go in and log on with us, and we're able to share life as a family together. So right now, I want you guys to just sit back, relax, and take advantage of this time for you to connect not just with God, but connect in spirit with the word that we are bringing today. Pastor Jay has an amazing word that's going to instill change in your life. And we're in a moment and in a season where we need to see change. We need to see change all around us. And it has to start somewhere. And we're going to dive into that today. So right where you're at, sit back, relax, enjoy and let's get ready to praise and worship God. Are you ready? Because we're ready. Let's go. Here we go. Right where you are, we ask, Father, to open our eyes and our hearts. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the 
morning, everybody. How are you? Actually, good afternoon. I'm like thinking this morning, been up too early. Good afternoon, everybody. As my wife said, welcome to the living room. We're so excited you're here with us today because we got a powerful message. And I think right now that song, that worship, that music that we just um, just shared, it really speaks to the season that we're in and the time that we're in, where we're in a place, really, if you want to be honest with yourself, where you've got to have God open up your heart and, and just ask him to really let him, uh, let us see him where he's at. And so we just thank you for joining in, and we pray that today, you know, hearts would be open, man. Yeah. Vic, you ready to have your heart open today? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Amen. Sarai, you ready thank to have you your Lord. heart open? Yes, I am. Come on. I'm excited. <laughs> oh, oh, my bad. Yes, Vic still, absolutely. Vic still, 100%. Vic's still in the very white mode. All my right. Fault. <laughs> my fault. Anyway, so guys, welcome. We're going to be going into um, uh, a new series Okay, where we just got out of our Unshaken series, and if you missed any part of our Unshaken series, uh, you really just can't miss any part of it. You got to go back, you got to hear it, you got to listen to it, because we talked about how we remain unshaken in the midst of crazy times. Uh, and, you know, we're still continuing, and we're still living crazy times, right? We came out of a uh, global biological pandemic, and to use the words of one of my favorite uh, preachers, Dr. Tony Evans, we came out of a uh, biological pandemic into a cultural pandemic and really the reason is because we have a spiritual pandemic that's been here for way too long okay and so as we sit here and we're doing this recording today we're in a time right now and you guys all can i'm sure share share with this where it's been kind of a crazy week okay and a crazy two weeks matter of fact and if we really look at it, it's been more than just two weeks it's just the last two weeks with the unfortunate and senseless murder of, of, of George Floyd, that we're seeing a lot of people now becoming vocal about what's going on, you know? And, and I, I wanted to share, before we speak in, about this next season, which is called Change, I want to talk about the situation. And I want to talk about it, not from our human perspective or our feels or our emotions, but really I want to speak to it on, on what does God say about the matter? Because there's a reality. We all have got our feelings. We've all got our opinions. And we're entitled to our feelings. And we're entitled to our opinions because those are things that have been shaped by our educational experiences. Not just in the school, but through life. Our cultural experiences, you know. Uh, you're going to have a different way of seeing something if you've never been in the position of somebody else who might have a different perspective. And if there's one thing that I've learned in my life is that our position determines our perspective. If I can stand in front of something and see it the same way as you, then I might be able to address it the same way it needs to be addressed. But the reality is, even though we have our own personal opinions, we need to come to a place where we understand what does God say about a matter. And I think here at Thrive Church, we are really, um, what's the word, dedicated, I want to say, in speaking truth, but speaking truth in love. Okay, and that truth comes from the written word of God. Okay, and if we can't learn to speak the word of God with love and with truth and, and, and address real issues in real time, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not doing my job as a pastor and we're not doing our job as a church. Uh, but I do want to speak to a lot of people right now who, you know, have been asking themselves, what's going on? How do I react? What position do I take? I want to let you know that if you're still in that place, that's an okay, to play, okay place to be in as well. Because a lot of people are quick to opine, but they don't have an opinion. Their opining, their opinionating has to do with just, you know, what they're feeling, what they're emotionally expressing. And that's okay. That's part of the processing. But some of us don't know what to say. We want to say something, but we're still processing. Here's the reality. It's okay to process. But it is not okay to stay stuck. We have to continue to grow in all these areas and mature. So we're starting this series called Change, and the whole impetus or the whole uh, uh, move behind this series change is that we can learn to change ourselves. See, I can't change my wife. I can't change my kids. I know I've been trying for a long time, and it doesn't work. <laughs> and it doesn't work, okay? But there is one thing that I can change. You know what I can change? I can change myself. And if I can just commit to the change of one, then I might just be able to influence the many. And that's what this series is about. It's about all of us committing to the change of one. So I'm going to put some people on the spot, particularly those with microphones in the same room as me right now. Vic, <laughs> are you committed to the change of one? 
100%. Sarai, are you committed to the change of one? A thousand percent. <laughs> oh, showing up the she hubby. She always got to upstage me. <laughs> Laura, Classic are you committed Sarai. to the change of one? Yeah. Do me a favor. Just pass that mic down. Manny, are you committed to the change of one? Amen, for sure. All right. And behind the piano, don't light the cameras. But are you, Mr. Max, committed to the change of one? Absolutely. Amen. We all got to learn to be committed to the change of one because that is the only thing that is in our control. And if we would just learn as a nation to be committed to changing ourselves, changing our hearts, we can really change a country and change a nation. So I'm going to jump into this series prelude, if you will. And I want us to learn how to deal with uh, difficult situations from a godly perspective. And for that, I want to read about a story in the Bible that is really relevant to today's time and, and really gives us the ability to look at it from a godly perspective. And that comes from Luke chapter 10. Many of you may be familiar with this story. It's the story of the Good Samaritan. It says this. It says, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes. They beat him and they went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity or had compassion on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and then he put the man on his own donkey and brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave it to the innkeeper. He said, look after him. And to fast forward the story, he says, if this is not enough money, I'm going to pay whatever this man owes when I come back around. If we look to the story, there's so much we can get out of this, but I really want us to focus on a couple of things. Number one, for far too long, the church has been silent on difficult issues. And I think the church has been silent on difficult issues because we really don't know how to address them, okay? And the difficult issues will only be resolved when we can come close to the difficult issue. Mm -hmm. Let me explain this. We had three people in this particular story. We had the priest, the Levite, and the Samaritan. The priest represents leadership in church. The Levite represents those that go to church and serve in church because the Levite was basically a church staff member. But then when we talk about the Samaritan, this is that person who's not at church. And then we as a body of Christ wonder why people look at us weird because the church hasn't stood up to speak on certain matters. Mm -hmm. And then when we begin to speak on certain matters, we speak as if we're self-righteous, mm -hmm. as if we got the end-all be-all. I'm going to tell you right now, here at Thrive Church, we are not going to speak upon our own opinions or our own biases. We're going to speak on what God says about a matter. Because when we do that, we can elevate our game and elevate our thinking, and then we can really affect change. And so we see here in this story, two people had the responsibility to do something about a bad situation. I mean, this dude, he was half dead. If nobody reacted, he would have died. But then we see that the Samaritan man, he showed up and he acted he wasn't the one that everybody expected to take action, but he was the one that took action. He was actually the one who was least likely to take action. Why? Cultural history lesson. Y'all ready? Mm -hmm. In this time, Samaritans, they would be, in, in, in the time that we're speaking right now, let's just call it, they would be the black culture. Okay, and I'm just going to speak real and clear, okay, because we're talking in a time of racism and we're talking where every, that's what everybody's talking about. We know racism has always existed, if we're going to be honest. So, so this is, you know, a trending topic, but it's awesome because we need to speak about it, right? But here's the reality. In this story, the Samaritan was the equivalent of an oppressed culture, of an oppressed people, okay? And here we had the, the priest and the Levite who were the Jewish people at the time, who were the privileged culture or the privileged people and they walked by they didn't do anything but this samaritan he risked his life by saving this man who was beaten allow me to explain think about this would you, okay i know you guys can't respond uh, respond to me on home but but would you guys give me permission <laughs> would you give me permission those that are in this room to just get real real and real raw for a second yeah. You guys give me Speak. permission? I need Speak. everybody's permission. permission. Oh, okay. All right. They at least gave me permission whether you give it to me at home or not. Here's the reality, okay? This Samaritan was the outsider. Let me speak in today's terms. Let's assume this Samaritan was the black man, okay? The man that was beaten in that time, 
he was not somebody who was passing by. He was there. Let's say that he was the white man. Mm -hmm. You with me? The black man had everything to risk. If he would have gone and picked up this white man who was beaten and gotten caught, how would they have seen him? They would have likely accused the Samaritan of having beaten that white man. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. He was the culturally oppressed, but he stepped out of his place to help somebody who was in need because it wasn't about race. It was about doing the right thing thing and too often people who need to do the right thing aren't doing the right thing and that's what we see in this situation so i want to bring it back for a second and say how do we as a conscientious people as a body in christ as a church how do we address difficult or sensitive issues my thought head on number one but what i want us to take from this scripture is how the samaritan did it what did he do he came and he saw Okay, he did not afford himself the luxury to stay back and not address the situation. He came right up to it. He addressed the situation. He saw what was going on and he took action. If we are going to be honest, we for too long have not addressed certain issues. And maybe it's ignorance. Maybe it's not knowing. Maybe it's not relating. But there are topics that we cannot fail to address. So when we have difficult um uh, difficult situations or difficult topics that we need to handle, we need to learn to address them directly. Come to the issue, see it, and affect change. And if I may, just for a moment, we need to learn to have compassion for people who are hurting. Amen. Okay, we need to learn to have compassion for people who are hurting. And I'm going to talk about that today. What should our position be as a body of Christ? And this all comes from Scripture. This is not what JJ thought. This is not what any of us think. It should be what we think because it comes from God's perspective. So the first thing I want to give you, I'm going to give you three of them. If you're taking notes, get ready. Here's the first position that we need to take as a body. One, we need to pain with those who are in pain. I said it intentionally. We need to feel the pain of those who are in pain. Why? First Corinthians chapter 12, 26 says, if one part suffers, then every part suffers with it. God is calling us to a place of empathy. Empathy is understanding somebody else's reality. We might not understand their reason, but we can come to understand their reality. We can have empathy in a situation. You might not have had their experiences, but you can share in their pain. And in that way, we look out for our brothers and sisters who are hurting. Because in this time, look, you might not be the person who is in pain, but I can assure you there's somebody who's around you who might be in pain because they perceive it in a different way. So if we can learn to pain with those who are in pain, we can learn to have empathy, and we can build one another up. Point number two, we need to, how do I say this? Stop doing wrong, learn to do right, seek justice, and defend the oppressed. Because that's what God would ask of us. Look what it says in Isaiah chapter 1, verses 16 through 17. He says, wash and make yourselves clean. In other words, he's implying that we're dirty. <laughs> Our lack of doing right makes us dirty. Come on, somebody. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Defend the oppressed. Take up the cause of the fatherless and plead the case of the widow. I don't think I can say it any clearer. God expects us to stop doing wrong, learn to do right, seek justice, defend those that are oppressed. Why? Why would God ask us to do this? Because all of us have the right to live in the fullness of the freedom that God intended for us to live in. And if some people are not living in that freedom that God intended for us to live in, we need to be agents of change and help people to be free. Last I checked, Jesus came to set some people free. And I pray today that he would set all of us free in this time and set those free that feel oppressed, that you can walk free and confident knowing that God's got your back. Point number three, and this I want to be very, very clear. We need to at all times stand against all forms of evil. Can I, can, what was the, the key word in that statement? All forms of evil. Well, let me put you some examples. But first, I want to read from Romans 12, 9. Here's what it says. 
Love must be sincere, and we need to hate what is evil and cling to what is good. We need to learn to hate what is evil because God hates what is evil, okay? Here's the reality. We here at Thrive, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not just trying to speak for everybody, but I think in this point I do because we are taking God's perspective. We need to hate what is evil. So we're going to call it out. We need to stand against racism in all of its forms. Okay, we know that there is a particular voice being heard right now, and we stand with the voice against racism. But racism goes all kinds of ways, okay, because racism has to do with a particular feeling of hatred or indifference or prejudice against any particular person because of their race. Guys, there is but one race, and that is the human race. But there are different cultures, people of different backgrounds, and we stand against racism in all of its forms. And we stand right now, I mean, how ignorant would it be as a truly multicultural, multiracial church to negate the reality that at this time, our black brothers and our black sisters are suffering. We stand against racism in all of its forms. We stand against corruption in all of its forms. We stand against systemic abuse at whatever level in the government. You understand what I'm saying? We have to stand against corruption because God would have stood against corruption. We stand against corruption in any single position of authority. We're going to hate violence and destruction likewise. You know, a lot has been talked about the, the, the violent protests and the result and the source of those protests. I got to tell you, man, protest all you want. Voices need to be heard, and we are in a time where we need to raise awareness. While the iron is hot, we need to strike. But we need to do so sensibly, right? If we are protesting in a way that drowns out the voice that was intended to be heard, what are we doing? So we need to call out violence in all of its forms. Okay, violence against races, violence against people, violence against people's rights and people's livelihoods. It is evil. And we're going to call it out and we're going to stand against it. We're going to stand against division and all hate in all of its forms. Uh, I know Danny T and I were talking this past week and we'll probably talk a little bit about it and this after coming up. But here's the reality. Division, hatred, factions, or dissensions, these are all acts of the flesh. And we were called as a church to live in accordance with the Spirit. So when we carry out division, when we carry out dissension, when we carry out factions or hatred or jealousy, we're, we're so used to talking about sexual immorality as a church. But in that same verse, God says, you need to put aside your hatred. You need to put aside your divisions. See, we can't take part of the truth of God and ignore the other truth of God. We need to take it when it's relevant and apply it when it's now. So we need to understand that the vision is an act of the flesh. You who call yourself spiritual on the other side of this phone, got to check some stuff. We all need to check some stuff. We need to have a heart check. This new series that we're going into is about that. It's about having a heart check and changing. This is just a prelude to what's to come. It doesn't matter. Oh, I'm going to say something. I might be controversial, but I'm going to say something. It doesn't matter whether your skin is black or your uniform is blue. We all need to put aside all signs of hatred, all evil in all of its forms. We stand with everybody looking to do right and not do wrong. And it's something we got to learn, guys. This is a process. I want to tell you this, though, because it's easy to say that, right? It's easy to speak boldly. we got to stand against hatred. What are we supposed to do in this time? God gave us the answer in the verse that I just read in Romans chapter 12. He tells us to hate what is evil but that, 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 that verse of hate what is evil is surrounded by two other verses. He says, love must be sincere. Then he says, hate what is evil. And then he says, cling to what is good. What does that mean? When we stand against these things, we don't stand, or I should say to stand, is not just to hate evil. To stand is to sincerely love and to cling to what is good. You guys got that? A lot of us are asking, what do I actually do in this time? I hate evil. I stand with you, pastor. But what do we got to do? Because it's not just about hating. 
uh, evil. It's about loving sincerely. When we can truly just learn to love one another, we can get past hate. That might sound cliche, but that was a message that transcends the times because Jesus came for all people. He died for all people because he so loved the world. And that is a position we got to take. We can't just stand against evil, stand against hatred, stand against all these things we've talked about. We got to take a position of sincere love. And I want to tell you guys that all this hatred, everything that's going on, it is darkness. I'm going to share that with you in a couple of moments in my final thoughts. But it is darkness. And I want to tell you, darkness cannot withstand the light. Can we just worship him in this moment and make these declarations through song? That darkness Amen. will not withstand the light. Amen. surrounding me let it break at your name still call the sea to still the rage in me to still every way at your name Jesus Jesus you make the darkness tremble Jesus Jesus Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, breathe, call these bones to live, call these lungs to sing.
Because in the middle of dark times, Jesus, Jesus, you are the answer. You are the answer. Jesus, Our position Jesus, is that we pain with those who are pained. Jesus, we continue Jesus, to learn to do right and stop doing wrong, to seek justice, to defend the oppressed. But we're also going to stand together as one against all forms of evil. But I need to tell you this because it's one thing for us to call out evil, to take a stand. But I think we got to identify the source of the evil, the source of the darkness. Jesus did that for us. He said it to us in 1 John chapter 2, verse 11. He said, but anyone who hates another brother or sister is still living and walking in darkness. What's the problem? The darkness. He says that such a person does not know the way to go having been blinded by the darkness. <laughs> and Jesus gives us the answer. He gives us the answer. He says it in John chapter 8, verse 12. Jesus spoke to the people once more, and he said, he said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness. And because of this, you will have the light that leads to life. What are my final thoughts? Very simple. You have a way out of the dark place that you might find yourself in. If your dark place is a place of hurt, is a place of pain, because of all that is going on right now in the world, you have an answer. You have a way out. That way out is Jesus. If your dark place is a place of confusion, because maybe you don't relate Maybe you don't understand, and you don't understand why people are feeling the way they're feeling. Remember, you might not understand the reality, but you can understand, or rather, you might not understand the reason, but you can understand the reality. And if that's your dark place, just a place of confusion, there's also a way out. That way out is Jesus. Jesus is the light. He's the way out. And today, I just want to encourage you. Whatever place of darkness you find yourself in. <laughs> I, I'm going to say this halfway funny because it sounds funny. But run to the light. There's light at the end of the tunnel. And that light is Jesus. And when Jesus comes up on the scene, the darkness flees. The darkness trembles. That's why I love that song. Because when the light is there, there is no darkness. And I would invite you today to just accept the light of Jesus Christ into your heart and into your mind. I want to pray right now that you would open up your heart, open up your mind to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Right where you are, just say, Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. And commit yourself today to make a change, to be the change of one, to influence your family, to influence your own life, to influence those around you. Because Jesus is the light and the darkness cannot withstand the light. Father, we thank you in this moment as we continue to close out in worship, declaring this song. We thank you for everybody who is on today. We pray forgiveness, Lord, for all those who, are, through a lack of understanding, has not understood what's going on. We pray for those that are in pain right now, and we stand with them, and we speak down all forms of evil, all forms of hatred, in the mighty name of Jesus this morning. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Your name is a light that the shadows can't deny. Your name cannot be overcome. Your name is a life forever lifted high. Your name cannot be overcome. Jesus.
Jesus, Jesus. In your life, never let the darkness take out the light. Keep walking with Jesus from this day to next day. And we're just coming to you live from the living room until we see you next time. We love you. As a body, we stand with you. And just keep on thrive living. We love you guys.